this week. And uh, I, I, I preached last Sunday, and I'm just going to refer to this. We're not going to spend a lot of time there. We were in a, on the Lord's Prayer. It's in Matthew chapter 6. And we were in verse uh, uh, 13 uh, last Sunday, where Jesus finished up the Lord's Prayer with, Deliver, uh, uh, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And uh, I talked about that last Sunday right here. And, uh, uh, and I talked about how that Jesus said, and he goes on after he said amen, he went on and clarified some of the things he said. But he clarified verse 13. That's why he clarified because he said, if you don't forgive, neither will your father forgive you. It's, uh, our, our willingness to forgive somebody is directly tied to, to, to our needing forgiveness from God. The problem is that's the disconnect for, for, for us a lot of times. What's well, for me? The... Uh, because when prayers aren't getting answered, it's a good thing to check, uh, do a systems check on yourself. Because God has clearly said, if you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. And it's not a matter of God's not willing to forgive you, or God cannot forgive you, or God's not big enough to forgive you. Of course he is. The question is, are you big enough to accept forgiveness? Uh, and, 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 and it comes down to, to the idea that we're saved by grace through faith. Everybody say faith. 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 We're saved by our faith. Our faith, God's grace. And the problem is if you have been hurt and wounded uh, by life, uh, usually it's a, it has to do with a betrayal or rejection in your life. You're husband or your wife cheated on you, maybe not once or twice, but repeatedly especially. If your parents or grandparents were abusive, if you're, if, uh, if you're a, a lady, a female, you were sexually abused by a father, a stepfather, an uncle, people that you had every right and to have the expectation of for them protecting you, but they didn't do that. They just, they, they were the perpetrator. The, uh, that, that's what the Bible calls a wounded spirit. Then if you go over to the book of Hebrews, I didn't go there last night, but this is part of my wounded spirit seminar that I've been teaching for many, many years. The, uh, the spirit gets wounded, and I've taught it here a lot of times on how that your spirit get, can get wounded through the spirit of, of rejection and hurt. And uh, the, uh, if you have grown up with that kind of hurt it seriously seriously damages your ability to trust Amen. imagine if you're a little girl five six years old and your father's molested you and you grew up with that how do you trust a man after that how do you trust a husband after that if you've been gone through that kind of abuse, you develop a, you, it's called compensation. If you're hurt, you have to have a, do something to protect, protect you from, that, from happening again. <clears throat> and that, well, what happens is you develop an attitude and, and it's, it's not a conscious thing that you decided, it just develops. The, uh, the to, or it's almost impossible to trust. And Hebrews chapter 12 talks about, do not frustrate the grace of God. And that's when God offers his grace of forgiveness. But because of our hurts of the past and the wounds of the past, we cannot bring ourselves to trust God, trust in his faith. It's all right to tr not trust the wrong people, but we have to get healed so healed that you can trust again. And are, is anybody tracking with me? <clears throat> I don't know why my voice is hoarse this morning. I haven't been 
don't need a thing, but <clears throat> excuse me. I, I'm sorry to cough in this microphone and everybody listens to it. <coughs> I, have a, <coughs> I have a good friend. He's a preacher. He calls me every frequently. Does it, but he gets on the phone with me, and the first thing he does is start clearing his throat in my ear. <laughs> <laughs> I asked Nancy, why don't he do that before he gets on the phone? The, uh, the, uh, but we have to, frustrating grace is when we cannot get a hold of God's grace because we can't trust. The inability to trust. Not only don't trust people, but we don't trust God either. The, uh, but to get saved, you've got to trust. And to get your healing, you've got to trust God. Uh, this, this Christian life is all about trust. And when it comes down to what we're talking about, when God says, I'll forgive your sins, that involves us trusting God that Jesus paid the price for our sins, that God is willing, knows the worst about us, and he's willing to forgive us anyway. How many knows only the guilty deserve forgiveness? Only the guilty need forgiveness. So, if you follow that down, God is saying, here, I forgive your sins. If you'll trust me to forgive your sins. Trust implies an action. It's one thing to say, I trust you. But it is another thing to loan you my car. You understand what I'm saying? The... Uh, I might loan you Nancy's car, but you ain't driving my pickup. <laughs> See, trust, there's trust, and then there's trust. The, uh, so God is saying, if you can trust me to forgive you, then you can trust me enough to, to, to forgive the people who hurt you. You hurt God, now you have to turn around and forgive people who hurt us. And that's where we stop. We get a disconnect. God, I want your forgiveness, but don't ask me to forgive people who hurt me. And the Bible calls it a debt. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our How many knows the wages of sin is death? And that, that's the price. Jesus, uh, uh, if our life of sin, we owe death but if we go by the old by before Jesus sin has to be paid for by a death and God made a system in his mercy in the Old Testament where you could substitute a death instead of you you don't have to die for your sin but if you come to the tabernacle uh, and you put your hands and you bring a lamb you could put your hands on the head of that lamb in the presence of the priest and the priest would, would uh, ask God to take your sin and put it on that lamb then they killed the lamb that's why Jesus is called the lamb of God because Jesus died for our sins and his blood is what covers our sins so faith requires an action it's one thing to I can believe that Jesus forgave my sin when he died on the cross and he paid the price for my sin Isaiah 53 read the chapter I say, he, it was him for us. He paid the price with his, with his own blood to pay the price for our sin. But it's not good enough. If that was, the story doesn't stop there. Jesus paid the price for our sins and the sins of the whole world. So, is the whole world saved? Obviously not. We, that, but I have to trust Jesus and then do, an, do something because of that tr trust, because of that faith. To get saved, you believed that Jesus died for your sins. But then, it's one thing for Jesus to die, but we have to accept his death. I accept Jesus Christ as my Savior. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, for by grace are you saved through faith. That not of anything you can do, but it's what Jesus, trusting what Jesus has already done. 
So we pray a prayer of, uh, of uh, salvation and, and, and confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. That prayer is an action because of this trust that I have in him. Are you following me? Now, Jesus carried that on. He said, if you've done that, now pass it down, pass it on. We owed a debt. Jesus paid the debt. And we, and we accepted his forgiveness. But now he's saying, look, you forgive people who owe you. And the Bible calls it all the offenses, what people have done to us, they owe us a debt. What's the debt that all of us want to charge, want people to pay that have hurt us? If you ever been a, cheated on by a spouse, the years have passed. Both of you have moved on, but you still want him to pay. You want that sucker to suffer. Somehow. God, if you don't kill him, I will. God is saying, look, forgive him. Amen. Forgive her. Forgive the offender. Because the, but you're going to say, they owe me. Well, what do they owe you? Well, they might owe you some alimony. But they could pay you a million dollars and you'd still wouldn't be satisfied. You'd spend the money, of course. But what we really want is apology. I was wrong. I did you wrong. That's, that's what we want. I wish it, there's people that hurt me 50 years ago and I've been waiting 50 years for an apology and they, they haven't done it and they're not going to do it. Well, I don't know if they're not going to do it. Some of them died. They're not going to do it. The, uh, but what God is saying, quit expecting it. Quit expecting them to make it right with you. They can't do it. They're not going to do it. They don't want to do it. And they're not suffering because you're hurting. You're suffering because you're hurting. Anybody with me? So, just like I had to do something because I believe Jesus died for my sins to be born again. In the same translation, you have to, when, so Jesus said, when I have to look instead of upward, I have to look downward to people, not God above me, but I have to look at people below me. And, and I turn around and I have to forgive them, not for their sake, but for my sake. Are you fear? You understand that? I have to let it go. And sometimes you can feel very self-righteous in hanging on to it. You want justice. Well, if God gave you justice, you'd already be dead. We don't, don't ask God for justice. What Jesus gave us is mercy. And, and God forgives. So I preached that last Sunday right here. Most of you were right here listening to it and saying, Amen, Amen, brother, Amen, brother Freddie, Amen, go Jack. Well, I went home and Tuesday morning, that's usually when I like to have my prayer time is Tuesday morning. Not Tuesday morning, every morning. Uh, but this was last Tuesday. And I, I like my coffee. I like my coffee hot. And I like to sit out. I have two porches, one on the south, uh, south side of my house and one on the north side of my house. And in the mornings, it's cool and too cold for me to sit out there, but it feels so good because the sun shines on me on that side, and it feels good. The, uh, so I was sitting out there with my cup for cup, drinking Tuesday morning, and, and just thinking and praying and watching the cars go by that was going up to the camp meeting up above my house. And, and I was sitting there, and, and so the Holy Spirit brought me back to my own message 
forgive people that owe you. And Lord, when you've lived as long as I have, almost 75 years, it's a long list. So I, I, first time I just kind of passed it off and then the Holy Spirit wouldn't give up. He just kept reminding me, reminding me, forgive. You preached it, why don't you do something about it now? And so I said, Lord, okay, God. So I started 50 years ago. And I said, God, I forgive this one, and I forgive that one, and I forgive this. And it took me a while to pass through all of them and forgive them. Some of these people I have forgiven a hundred times. I mean, me, Jesus said, forgive 70 times 7. If you multiply, 70 times 7 is 490 times in one day. Nobody's got time to hurt you 490 times every day. What is he talking about? He's talking about every time you, you might forgive somebody, but something will happen during the day that reminds you of that, and you forgot you forgave, and all of that bitterness comes back. You let it all back in again. So you have to do it all over again. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Anybody been through that? The, uh, so I, I went through it all again, and, and I called some names, just me and God. I forgive him, I forgive her, I forgive what they said, I forgive what they did. I forgive, I forgive. Okay, so, they're coming down, and, and uh, the Walmart truck went by my house. And going to the camp meeting. And it, it reminded me of my last one on my list. Wally, Pastor Wallace. If you don't know Wallace, he used to be our youth pastor right here. He sang a lot of songs up here, and we've had a lot of good times together. He was my co-host on my television program for several years. We fly together to Midland, Texas, uh, and did the testimonies and, uh, on worldwide television. And we were close. We're close. But something happened. I believed that he was wrong. I still believe he was wrong. And I've been, and I couldn't understand how God seemed to be blessing him up there. God, how can you bless a man that's wrong? God ought to ask me first, this was my attitude. Well, I sat there and God said, well, what are you going to do about it? I said, okay, God, I forgive. And I just bowed my head and said, oh, God, I, I forgive him. And I recited several things. That not, that I didn't hear him say that I heard he said. I mean, notice when you hear it, it hurts worse than if you heard it with your own ears. The Bible calls it tail bearing. But the, uh, so I cried and I forgave and Nancy had already come to to the, oh, I guess you're still in bed then maybe, but the, uh, I forgave. I felt that load lift off of me. <laughs> that I've been carrying around for 10 years. And then I got quiet and, and then the Holy Spirit said to me, okay, you forgave him. Now what you going to do about it? I, I said, you kidding. It's hard to just forgive. Now I do something. And the Holy Spirit said, yeah. If you don't do something, you don't really believe what you're saying. And so I said, well, what should I do? And the Holy Spirit just said, just clear as a bell to me. You have to go to the camp meeting. Just show up up there. And I said, I started speaking Navajo. <laughs> really? The Lord said, yeah, really. I said, everybody knows. That's why I, and he said, that's why you need to go. Everybody knows. Here's a principle that you need to understand. A private offense can be taken care of in a private 
talk. But a public offense has to have a public apology. You can't offend publicly and then repent privately. If you, and because I am who I am, I'm a pastor, I'm a leader, I'm high visible. Everybody knows everything about me. Everybody knows what I've been feeling about him for 10 years. So I said, God, what, what about what if, what if, what if? Don't worry about the what if. You just do what's right for you. So Nancy, and we had to go to Farmington later in the day, so we're driving into town, and I told her this story. She looked at me and said, wow, you going to do that? I said, yeah, I'm going up there tonight. Or Thursday night's the first open night we had. I said, yeah, I'm going to go Thursday night. And she said, I'm going with you. And so, uh, so we did. And I talked about it. If you weren't in Wednesday night service, I shared what I just got through sharing with the Wednesday night group. And the, uh, so we took some couple lawn chairs, and our intention was just show our faces. That would just send a message, Freddie's here, Nancy's here, uh, and that's probably good enough. So, but I, uh, we talked about it and said, well, I told her I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to apologize to him for everything I've, I've said over 10 years. Not word for word, but you know, you bundle it together. But the, uh, I said, so I said, let's take our lawn chairs and there's a big crowd, a lot of people, and we'll get there late. And after they start singing, and we'll just sneak in the back, and that's good enough. Well, we got there, and we parked our way out there, and the pulpit's over here, and the tent up, flaps are up, and he was on the platform, and I didn't know his, we were still outside the tent. I couldn't see what was going on inside the tent. I figured this out later. We started <coughs> walking our way through, through the cars, we were about three or four rows back. And then I just got uh, uh, under the tent and look, started looking around and talk, asked the usher, where's a good place for us to set our chairs up? And he started saying, well, there's some openings over there and there's some over here. And I looked up and here comes Wallace. He jumped off the platform. He was coming right to it. And I said, Nancy, he's coming. <laughs> and he came down, he grabbed both of us, he cried, he hugged us, he just, uh, and, and he said, I want you to come, uh, I've got some special chairs up on the front row, I want you to go, I said, no, Wallace, no, no, we got, we're going to sit right back here. No, 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 he took our chairs away from me and ran down the aisle, uh, I said, you got to sit down here on the very front. That's not what I wanted to do, but that's his tent, and he's the host, and he's, he's wanting to honor us. So he gave us seats of honor on the front row. And so they sang and, uh, and made all their announcements and introductions and did several things. But the, he, Wallace was not leading the service. He's as a young man, this very talented young man who was leading the service and, uh, and everything. And the service is good. The song leader was amazing. And their articulate young man, Navajo guy that was, uh, was leading the service, he knew who I was. He welcomed several guests. I had people, ministers there from uh, all over the res and different places. And, and I could tell he kept looking at me. And I didn't know him. But after a while, he, I, I realized he didn't know what to do with us. But he had seen Wallace bring us and set us right there on the front row and went and got us some water. And Wallace himself was personally, he had all these helpers, but he's doing it all himself for us. The, uh, and after a while, between announcing, he said, uh, Pastor Hall from the power place is here. He's right there. And then he went on. And I thought, well, that's, that's probably good, pretty good. That's good enough. I was happy to sit in the back. The, uh, 
Uh, and then I saw Wallace get up off his chair and go whisper something in his ear. And so the next opening he said, Pastor Wallace wants Pastor Freddie and Nancy to come up on the stage and say something. And on Wednesday night I said, I had already decided if he did that, I was going to have to apologize publicly. I was real happy to do it in the shadows out there at the back of the tent with him. But, but now we had already told public, told the, prayer, the Bible study group Wednesday night, if he invites me up, I'm going to have to do this publicly. So he did. I, went, I stood up, we're on the front row, so I just walked up right in front of the stage and I said, we'll stand here. And he's standing up here. And he said, no, 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 come up here, come up here, come here. And all the people clapped. The, uh, so we went up the ramp, the handicap ramp, we're old. And the, uh, so he gave me the microphone. And after introducing myself in Navajo and greeting and... Uh, I said, I started crying. I couldn't help it. Lou was sitting right there beside us. She's witnessed all this. Ask her about it. And I, I said, I came here tonight to apologize to Pastor Wallace. And boy, it just got quiet in there. So I, I said, Wallace, and, and I, I came to apologize because I said a lot of ugly things about you I said some and I've uh, I've said some things and uh, and I said I just told you I meant every word of it <laughs> I did but I I want to know to you know that I'm sorry and I could hear him sobbing over there he's kind of behind us over to the side he got up and he came up in front of us there's probably they said that place holds 500 and it looked full to me. Uh, he came up there and then he apologized with a microphone. He said, I said a lot of things about you too. And he said, I'm sorry too. Wow. Uh, yeah. Then we just had a group huddle hug. Nancy and Wally and me and boy the crowd was just going crazy. I mean just noisy, just uh, just wild. But the question is, is Wally this, is Wally that? That's why we always call him, He's, they call him Apostle Wallace now, but we go back to the days when he was Wally. And I said, I told Wally with a microphone, I'm through judging you. If you have issues, I don't know if you have issues or not. But if you do, it's none of my business. It's you, between you and God. Amen. I'm tired of judging. I'm tired of trying to enforce morality or spiritual laws or I don't know. I don't know if he is, if he's this, if he's that, if he's doing this, doing that. I don't know. And I don't really want to know. Are you saying Because it's none of my business. Amen. Nancy and I were talking about it before we went over there, and I told her what I was going to say. And I told her, I don't know what guilt he's, if he's guilty of anything or not. But if he is, I can't fix it. Amen. God, he's a, he's a child of God, and it's between him and God. And if God can't fix it, I'm pretty sure I can't. How many knows you can't fix somebody else? So, it was a wonderful thing. And he's called me since then. We talked on the phone. I saw him yesterday. He had a pastor's meeting in Farmington with his guest, celebrity guest host, Perry Stone, which Nancy has watched him on, online a lot. I have watched him a lot. 
I just know who he was. But he's, it was a nice meeting. A lot of pastors in, from the area and the reservation were there and visited him. But when the meeting was closing and Pastor Stone had finished his message and they were having some closing remarks, we were at the table right in front of the speaker right here. One of the ushers, one of Wallace's ushers came over, a young woman, and tapped me on the shoulder and said, are you Pastor Hall? And I said, yes. He said, Pastor Wallace, we'd like for you and your wife to come over. They had the, the, the Pope was here, but they had the, the, the uh, what do they call it, the head table where all the dignitaries sit. It was way over there. And the, uh, so he, Pastor Wallace would like you to come over there to the table. So. Uh, well, we was the only one invited. We got up and she ushered out and all the people were looking on who he is. The, uh, but we went over there and he wanted us to meet Perry Stone and personally and so we met him and shook his hands and Wallace grabbed my phone and took a picture of Nash and I with Dr. Stone. But as of today, let me just, and I told the crowd, just one more thing I told them. I told them that from now on, I make a vow. I'm never going to speak negative about Pastor Wallace again. And I said to all of those congregations, you're, you're my witnesses to hold me accountable. And I'm going to say this publicly. I, and I say that to you. If I slip and I say something, let me know. Pastor, it slipped out. <laughs> no, I don't think it will. But what I'm saying is, God, our time is too short for Christians to be in conflict. Wallace told the congregation that their theme was unity. And he's standing there in front of us and we, after our group hug, he turned to told them that this was a confirmation of me stepping up and saying what I said and doing what I did. It would be a, uh, it was a confirmation to them that God was bringing unity. And so I've been thinking about that word unity. <clears throat> what does unity mean? So I did some study on the word unity, and I'm going to look at my notes here to give you the right scripture references. But the, uh, the word unity, <coughs> I see I picked up the wrong notes is what I'm looking at. The, uh, the word unity is the root word for, for uniformity. Uh, but the Bible in other places doesn't use that word. It uses the word harmony. Harmony. Uniformity is the legalistic side, legalistic application of a spiritual principle of unity. Unity is something that's in your heart. Uniformity is on the outside. Uniformity is the word that we get the, the word uniform from. As in the military, you wear, you wear a a uniform. Uh, as in sports, each team has their own uniform. And uh, anybody that doesn't wear your uniform is your competitor, is, is, is your is people that you got to beat. Well, but, but unity is much greater than uniformity because unity is we have the same purpose. Lifting up Jesus, preaching Jesus. And here's what the Lord said. He, he took me over to the word of, of uniformity, of, of harmony. I believe it's in, I, 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 see I picked up the wrong notes. I had the reference written down. But I believe it's in Romans, what, 12? I might be wrong on that, the reference. Uh, Romans, I think it's 1, 12 or something. Anyway. Where he says is the unity, be in, live in harmony. I put it on Facebook post this morning. Harmony. 
Harmony is when you realize and you recognize that we all have the same purpose, but different ways of fulfilling that. Harmony is a musical term. I play the piano. And if, uh, is this thing still on? Uniformity is everybody's on the same note. Let me get it over on the piano side here. That's, that's, that's the G note. What if everybody, when Marilyn's up here, we all sang just that one note? Mm, no matter what song it is. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. But, you, but there's no harmony. When you add harmony, when you play a basic chord, there's three notes. This is G, a chord, B, and D. You see how two notes sounds better than one? There's one, there's two. But if you add the third one, you see how three blends together? That's called harmony. And, the, and what God is saying in harmony and live together in harmony is if I'm, I'm in the kingdom of God, I'm on God's G note as a pastor. This is our note. Wally's over here and, and this one over here. And I can't say you should be over here on this note or you're not right. And he said, well, you should come over to my note or I'll get over here. No, what God is saying, that, that's uniformity. We're all wearing the same uniform. But what God is saying, I want everybody to, you do your thing. I'll do things my way. And when we all get to heaven, it's all going to harmonize. Does that make sense? So, so live in harmony. So I said, God, what does that mean for me and Wallace? God says, well, you keep on doing with your anointing, with your vision, what you do. We're not going to change and go back to the old days where we, where we danced the night away. And we changed four song leaders because they kept wearing out. And you, 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 like, we used to do that. They're doing that up there. What God is saying, I was asking God, God, do I have to go back? I'm getting too old for these long services. God said, no, you play your note. Play it as good as you can. But leave him alone if they want to dance and sing all night, dance and sing all night. Are you, you understand that? So, you're going to have two churches that harmonize, but not on the same notes all the time. I'm not going to have any trail rides. I'm not going to ride a horse. I'm not going, we're not going to play bingo. If you want to ride a horse, play bingo, go over there. But if you want to go to Bible college, you want to study the word, uh, you want to have the anointing. The anointing was here just a morning. When we prayed for those people, it was the same anointing that we would have had if we, if we danced for two hours first. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm not saying that we're right and they're wrong. I'm saying we're different. Y'all look at me like, huh? We're different. How many knows that you can be different and harmonize? <clears throat> you got to learn to harmonize in your home. If you're married and you're a husband, you're playing one note and your wife is playing a different note, but you're both in the same key. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And the more kids you add to the family, the more notes you add, and you better put them all in harmony or you're going to be sound terrible. Okay, so that's my message today is we're going to live in harmony. We're not going to change our style. We're not going to change what we do. He's not going to change his style and change what they do. But I'm not going to criticize what they do and he's not going to criticize what we do. Amen. Does that work good enough? Praise the Lord. 
So it's time to end this. I, I, I got some other notes that I have to wait for another day to do with sonship because what we did is Wallace acknowledged, as, as I did, is that he's still my son. We always call him son. How I many's got adult children that haven't always done what you wanted them to? Are they still your children? Absolutely. They're on a different note than you are now, but we're still in the same family. I'm making the same music. So, we're going, I don't know how much ministry we will share, if any. It might be just a fellowship thing. I don't know how that's all going to play out in, in the extension of it all. But what I'm saying is, what changed my mind was it's been six weeks, I think, five or six weeks, since I sat in the lung specialist's office and after having COVID and after having pneumonia after COVID. Uh, and finally, I went to the doctor. I didn't want to, I never did want to go to the ER because I had an idea they'd put me on ventilator. And, and I thought if I was on ventilator, I'd die. And if I didn't go, I'd die. And so what's the difference? But the, um, that was just my thoughts. I must say, I know Herb was on a ventilator. And the, uh, but for us, that's, that was our thinking. Uh, so, but the doctor, he finally, I called the doctor over the pneumonia. He ordered a CAT scan of my lungs. A week later, we went in for him to read it, the CAT scans, and he's a specialist. He had my lungs up on him, monitor like this, and he showed me all of the scarring from, uh, looked like a white spider web over a black lung. And he said, this is your lung, and this is the scars. And this is down here, the pneumonia was still there. And he looked at me and he said, you should be dead. You can't live with lungs like this. And I said, Doc, I'm alive. And he said, you're lucky. And I said, that's your word. Our word is blessed. He said, but you're healed now. You're, you're, he said, your body is doing a good job fighting that. And I was thinking, God is doing a good job fighting it. I'm standing here today, a living miracle to be alive. When you get that close to dying and you find out, and I didn't know I was that close to dying. When I should have been on a ventilator, I was sitting up here in a chair preaching. But when I found out from a specialized doctor, lung doctor, I should be dead. It makes you really do some serious thinking after that. What I decided was, I'm saved no matter what, because I'm saved by the blood of Jesus. Not by my works, but by his works. But I just want you to know, and I told the tent camp meeting family this, I just decided I don't want to die, whether it's now or 30 years from now, whenever I go, I don't want to go and face Jesus mad at people. So why not get it right now? Go ahead and forgive, go ahead and get it right. You don't always have to be the best buddies after that, but you have to get that bitterness out of here. Amen. It's killing you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, so that's where we are. So let me just, and I was just sharing this in our prayer group this morning, and Sister Marilyn spoke up and said, said what I did, and she believes that it was going to motivate a lot of people to forgive their debtors in the family, in the community, in the church. Can we all just forgive, let it go? It's too heavy a load to carry around, trust me. But 
let me just trust you. And God just let Nancy and I know that there's, we believe that it cleared the channel for us. We need some miracles in our lives. Nancy needs a miracle. I've got a miracle. Maybe you need a miracle. But if you can't trust, you can't get healed. So, so just let God heal that pain, all the hurts. But God cannot heal you if you won't let go of it. Praise the Lord. Stand up and let's pray together. Father, thank you. Oh, God. Thank you that you love us even when we don't love others. But it's your love that enables us to let go and let others. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that every person here can let go of whatever and whoever has hurt them in the past. It's not worth it. That load is too heavy. We let go of this one. I forgive this one. I forgive that one. I forgive that one. You may have to do it at home on your own time, your own prayer time. I always recommend that you just call the name out to God. and just, When nobody can hear it but God, just say, God, I forgive them. I forgive her. I forgive that what they said. I forgive what they did. But let go of it, and God will heal your heart from all that hurt that you've been living with. Amen. Somebody shout amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Blessing time. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Are you going to play for this? Hallelujah. Huh? You can do it. You, you want to sing? No, or are you just going to play with us? Hallelujah. Huh? I can sing. You can sing? Okay. Can sing? Okay. Hannah's.